six million years to die. Welcome to the Epic TV Surf Report. On today's show, I'd like to read a piece from the man whose job title reads, Surf Editor, The Inertia. Without further ado, this is Laird Hamilton, Corpses and Crap, Exploiting Surfing's Everest, by Ted Endo from www.theinertia.com. Let me tell you about Mount Everest. It is the highest mountain in the world. Standing more than five miles above sea level, it was first summited 60 years ago by Sir Edmund Hillary and his Sherpa, Tenzing Norgay. In 2012, 547 people climbed the mountain. Many paid their guides anywhere from 30,000 to 100,000 US dollars because they had next to no idea of what they were doing. Even at altitude, climbers sometimes wait in line for hours, surrounded by corpses and shit, on their way to the summit. I was reminded of Everest, which has been this way for more than a decade, when the raw footage of the most recent swell to light up Tehupo filtered through the internet. On some of the waves, the normally glassy blue-green face was shredded to a frothy mess as swarms of tow-in teams descended upon it and tried to outmaneuver each other for the takeoff spot. It was uglier than a frozen corpse. Laird Hamilton has complained, as he always does when it's too crowded for him to get the cover shot, but his public opinion is meaningless because it obscures the conversations that we really need to be having. Professional surfing, that is, taking pictures or video of yourself riding waves and using those images to make money, is partially responsible for the current overcrowded and Hobbesian state of surfing, from your local beach break to the lofty peaks of Peahi and Tehupo. And Laird Hamilton has contributed to that problem, something he seems to understand. The last time he opened his mouth to complain about the crowds at a spot he helped to blow up, that is, the time before this most recent last time, was Peahi. After nearly universal condemnation, he admitted to Chris Dixon, I should have never told anybody about Jaws and never taken a picture and we'd still be riding it by ourselves today. The overcrowding didn't occur exclusively because of the way the surf industry marketed it, but nothing prevented it. As a result, it and Tehupo bears a certain likeness to Mount Everest. Our first goal then is to try to preserve the inherently free and inclusive nature of surfing without turning lineups into chaos. I'd start by limiting the number of jet skis allowed at certain spots. This obviously isn't feasible everywhere, who would enforce it and how, but a spot like Teahupo seems to have a small enough community of dedicated riders as well as a small but strong presence of locals who could say, we only want X number of skis out on the biggest days and no towing when there are paddlers out. If nothing else, they need to open up the dialogue about how to keep wonderful surf spots from being overrun. And then hopefully, through trial and error, they can work out a system that allows all to enjoy their resources. And that, as they say, is that. And if all you surf fans out there would like to hear more from the Inertia Surf Editor, you can find all of Ted's contributions to surfing's definitive online community at www.theinertia.com. You can also follow Teddy Endo on Twitter at Jack Nasty Face. And on that note, thanks for tuning in to the Epic TV Surf Report. Until next time, don't forget to get wet.